percent chance of La Nina forming during the August-October time frame. We know the development of La Nina can lead to weaker easterly trade winds and below average vertical wind shear in the tropical Atlantic Ocean. This type of environment can be more conducive for tropical cyclone development. Also, NOAA's National Centers for Environmental Information has reported record warm water temperatures for much of the tropical Atlantic Ocean, as you see here. Forecast modeling indicates that above average sea surface temperatures are predicted during the peak months of the Atlantic hurricane season from August to October. We know warm sea surface temperatures and NOAA is predicting an above average 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. Specifically, there's an 85% chance of an above normal season, a 10% chance of a near normal season, and a 5% chance of a below normal season. For the range of storms expected, NOAA calls for the following. 15, 17 to 25 named storms with a top sustained wind of at least 39 miles per hour. Of these, 8 to 13 are forecast to become hurricanes with maximum st sustained winds of at least 74 miles per hour. And 4 to 7 are forecast to become major hurricanes, that is category 3 to 5, with maximum sustained winds of at least 111 miles per hour. Of note, the forecast for named storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes is the highest NOAA has ever issued for the May outlook. In addition, ACE projections range from 150% to 245%, which, as I previously noticed, is the second highest ACE forecast to start a season. Only With all of that said, I'd like to take a moment to remind you now is the time to prepare and stay prepared. Remember, it only takes one storm to devastate a community. And it's prudent to prepare now because once the storm is headed your way, it all happens so rapidly, you won't have the time to plan and prepare at that point. Before I close, I'd also like to give a special thanks to the very skilled and de dedicated forecasters at the National Hurricane Center in Miami. To, to be busy. And, and a couple reminders, you know, you look at these numbers and you, you've heard, I've seen a lot of familiar faces, you've heard me thousands of times say some of these stats, but we need your help. We need you to help us communicate what the real impacts are. So we need the folks in the media, emergency management, uh, across FEMA and the emergency managers to really remind people what the actual impacts are. And it's important to, to keep talking about these every season. So busy or not, it only takes one storm to make landfall or one to even get close to you to be a busy season, right? So there could be a, many storms like we're predicting, but it's that, that one that reaches you, and, and that could be a, a busy season. So we never, I need everybody to be completely prepared. So what and we're I trying to do important. here, and here's an example of this, a new cone. So you're going to still have the cone of uncertainty with a statistical analysis, but at the same time, we're also going to put our watches and warnings. We're going to put the impacts on the map. And this is a way that we can show everyone and the public and, and give everybody in the media a graphic to show to say, wow, there's sure a lot of impacts outside that cone, right? The graphic is so powerful because it means more than me saying, hey, there's impacts outside the cone. Okay, fine. But now you can see it. Okay? So this is experimental. We're going to try it this year. Uh, I'm super excited about it. So you can see, look how big the impacts are and how many of those impacts are outside the cone. The other part of it is the Spanish language translation uh, using artificial intelligence, AI. You know, for, for decades we had people in, in Puerto Rico, San Juan, translating our, our tropical products into Spanish. Uh, now we've partnered with a company called Lilt, and we're actually using AI to be able to, to, be able to translate that right.